Welcome to Speechless. We're glad to have you here this Thursday night, live from the SCC studios in White Bear Lake. My name is Tim Kinley. We're also playing live in uh, St. Paul over SPNN. And this show is a call-in show. I'd be glad to have your questions, comments, uh, input uh, on the subject matter that we're talking about. And I would appreciate it. Uh, so uh, feel free to do that. Uh, if you don't want to call in but have information you want to give me, uh, you can email me at speechlessmn at gmail.com. And uh, or if you want to watch my past shows, go to youtube.com, speechlessmn, and you can see some of the past shows there. Well, this is the 42nd year anniversary of Roe v. Wade, and then also uh, the day that decision was made, and also there's some other horrendous uh, decisions by the Supreme Court regarding the life of unborn children, but still live children. And every year that gets um, remembered, uh, memorialized at the state capitol in St. Paul and various capitals across the nation in the United States. And I went down today to the Capitol and filmed the events that took place down there. And so we're going to see some uh, video clips of uh, the event. And this is probably the only place you're going to be able to see. Matter of fact, I know, you know, maybe they'll put the whole event online. I don't know. I didn't see anybody filming it that was there the whole time but you're going to see the most clips here tonight than any place else. And <clears throat> uh, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. And we're going to be reviewing uh, somewhat the last year in the uh, pro-life abortion debate and what's been going on in the abortion industry and what's been happening pro-life-wise, legislative-wise, and of course in the legislature excuse me, in Congress today, uh, a bill was passed to completely ban taxpayer funding of abortion. Uh, but there are also some uh, interesting gamesmanships going on because another bill was being presented, was going to be presented, uh, which would outlaw abortion after 20 weeks because the fetus would feel pain and does feel pain. And, and some snafus came into play. And this is a very, very interesting uh, story to tell. And, but it's just a minor thing, but we'll get into that later in the show. I just want, uh, kind of what I want to do here is people are uh, mystified. Um, there's kind of a, I, I haven't been down to the Capitol, so I don't know what it's about. You know, do I really want to go? I, I, do I really want to get outside of my comfort zone and the things that I'm used to and go down there? Well, <clears throat> I want to kind of break that from you or help you with that uh, because if you're pro-life, you need to be there. And I call this day the National Day of Re Mourning and Repentance. Mourning for the lives, uh, 75, over 75 million lives. Uh, the in the United States that have been pulled apart limb by limb uh, from the mother's womb where the baby is viable inside that womb and but pulled apart and murdered. It's harsh, but that's the reality and we need to speak truth that that's what's going on because many women are being lied to. Uh, that's just a fetus. Well, fetus means little one, little child. You know, so they change the words. It's marketing to deceive and to, to make money. Uh, it's just a blob of tissue. Uh, well, everybody's a blob of tissue then. I'm a blob of tissue. So this uh, marketing scheme to go on to deceive uh, has cost 75 million lives. And there's been an agenda behind that. Uh, if, and we're going to discuss some of that agenda. Uh, but what I want us to see here, uh, starting out, is that, uh, let's run this video here. And I was down there, I was noticing people who come down, 
And what we see is there's people in wheelchairs uh, being taken care of. There's babies in strollers. Uh, there's little kids out there <laughs> in this weather playing in the snow. That ended up being a snowball fight later on between <laughs> some of the kids. But kids in high school, in junior high, grade school, um, senior citizens all over the place, all ages, coming down to the rally. And it was a big, big rally, big attendance. Um, but one of the things that I like about the rally and like to see is seeing the signs that are down there uh, because they're creative. Uh, they can be. And so let's uh, run the next clip here showing the signs that are down there. Some of the, these, this is the Knights of Columbus out of St. Croix Council. Well, it doesn't really say anything. They're just saying they're there, but they wanted to be on the show. They asked me, are you going to play? Are you going to show us? Yes. Here's one. I was a fetus. Of course, we all were. Of course, as a fetus is a little one. I regret my abortion. Uh, this is silent no more. I survived Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade won't survive me. Great sign. Abortion kills a child, uh, cancels a father, cripples a mother, and uh, corrupts a nation. Uh, I'm not going to be able to read that in time. <laughs> Calling a child unwanted says nothing. Oh, right. Abortion kills children. You know, just some simple signs. Abortion hurts women. Uh, adopt. Adoption is a loving option. Uh, some great signs. Uh, take my hand, not my life. This is the sign I think here is, is really significant. Black lives matter. All black lives matter. Uh, a great sign. And, and I think the importance here is because of the talk of uh, Ferguson and New York uh, and the events that went on there and the outcry of that is Black Lives Matter, and they do. Lives matter, and I won't separate between black and uh, Caucasian or Hispanic. Everybody lives matters, or uh, Indian. Everybody lives matter. If you're, if you're a Christian, that's, there's, there's no other way around it. All life matters, and uh, none of this racist garbage. It just, it's just not the way God made the world. It's human depravity that wants to put us in categories and say, I'm better than you uh, because my skin is a certain color. And that's wrong, and that's not what Martin Luther King fought about. But this whole Black, black Lives Matter is a big issue because if you take that argument and you take it to the abortion industry, you're going to find out in, in, in relationship to the number of black lives that are killed by police officers, it's 1,000 times more black lives are killed in abortion mills. 1,000 times more. And if you're going to say black lives matter, they better matter when they're in the womb. They better matter before they come out of the womb. Because if they don't matter there, they don't matter outside. And of course, Margaret Sanger, founder of Planned Parenthood, came to the United States and spoke to the KKK. She was very obvious and very out front about her view of abortion and why to have abortion. Killing blacks. Killing incompetent people. And if a white person was the fallout of having an abortion, so what? Because those people are stupid to do that. But let's get rid of the blacks. Let's get rid of the Hispanics, the undesirables of society. And believe me, this is about marketing. Because when you go from marketing this back in Margaret Sanger's time, uh, the KKK was alive. It was okay. We, you know, we, we can lynch 2,600 plus black people over that period of time. And there may be more uh, than that, but, you know, what we know of and can estimate, you know, 2,600 blacks. We do more than that in a month in the United States. Every month. 
through the abortion mills. And since Margaret Sanger was KKK and supportive of that and supportive of the American Nazi movement, when Hitler was defeated and the racism aspect of Hitlerism was talked down, they had to change their names from the American Nazi movement to the Eugenic Society. Okay, how do we kill off people? How do we tone down our name? And then from there, they went to forced sterilization. Of course, forced isn't a good name. Okay, and they targeted black people. And m many of these black people that were forced forcibly sterilized are still alive today in telling that story. And then you go from forced sterilization to birth control. Same people, different name. And then you go from birth control to, because control, you know, not positive, you go to Planned Parenthood. Same people, same group, same philosophy, and it's roots in the American Nazi movement, roots in the Nazi movement, roots in racism, all together. These are evil people. Planned Parenthood is evil, <coughs> in, in my opinion also. Uh, and uh, it's just marketing. How can we deceive you? And of course we've shown on this show, and uh, just a couple months ago, uh, a former abortionist from Texas, um, you know, said how it was. This is what we did. But she changed her mind when she had her baby, when she saw it was her baby like that that was being aborted. Uh, it, it's, it's a life-changing event when you go, and, and, and this is part of the picture. This is part of the what has done. You have to dehumanize something in order to kill it. If you humanize what is there, it's a lot harder to kill. So you dehumanize Native Americans. You dehumanize uh, Protestants. You dehumanize, of course, Muslims would dehumanize Christians. Okay, And you have <clears throat> then this dehumanizing, hu humanization of black people. They're not real people. I mean... I, when I was growing up, I would hear that argument, okay? This is, uh, never made sense to me. How, they're, they're human. I know black people, <laughs> you know? It, it just never made sense, but you have to dehumanize a group of people in order to abuse them, okay? Uh, whether it's women. And see, and, and even the women's movement wants to dehumanize women, in order to control them. And of course, that's coming out of the Planned Parenthood. You're not smart enough. Oh, you're an uh, 18-year-old, 16-year-old, 14-year-old. Take these 30 pills once a day, or, or take these pills, one pill once a day, for e each day of the month, and you've got to take it at the same time and don't miss a day doesn't happen to teenage girls. They don't do it. It's very, very, very difficult for them to do that. Okay, so um, that's part of the deal. We'll, we'll get these lies out there, and then it's a, a revenue generator for them. So it's a significant uh, factor uh, in the marketing of abortion to dehumanize. And, of course, that's not what the Bible's about. That's not what Christianity is about. Um, it, that, it, it's to end the dehumanization. Okay, um, so with that sign, Black Lives Matter, do they really matter? And does Planned Parenthood think they matter? Well, Margaret Sanger doesn't think they matter. All right. Um, Let's show uh, the next video here, and this just kind of gives a glimpse of the uh, crowd size here that we got going at the event. Very, a large turnout this year, uh, definitely larger than last year when I think it was uh, five degrees below zero. And so a, a, a very good turnout. Um, 
A lot of, a lot of people marching, so you got a good idea of the crowd side. All right, um, and then let's show the, the next clip. I found a, uh, saw a producer down there from, uh, there's all people glad to be uh, their picture taken, but there's Bob Zick there. He was down there at the rally, a producer that has Insight Insight on Wednesday night. Um, a, a man who's very pro-life and outspoken about it. It was good to see him there. Uh, all right. <clears throat> then one of the other things that happens down at the rally, and, and this is towards the end, but I'm moving it up towards the front here, is that uh, they announce the legislators uh, that are pro-life, that are pushing pro-life legislation that is in the House and the Senate. So let's run this clip here. And first, I'm just going to show you a couple U.S. reps that are in our uh, U.S. Minnesota reps. There's, uh, you know, that went way too fast, and I'm drawing a mental blank. Let's start over at the beginning there. Uh, Kelly Fenton there is down there talking to some people she knows, uh, I think. Tim O'Driscoll is not from this area, but Kathy Lomer is in the viewing audience, uh, was there. And then Representative Glenn Grunhagen's walking up the steps. Uh, he's been on the show a number of times. And here they is when they're announcing the legislators uh, that are uh, pro-life and pushing pro-life legislation. Later on in the show, we're going to go through what legislation is being uh, pushed uh, this year. Uh, definitely the House is going to pass some legislation. Uh, we'll see what the Senate does. But there are a number of DFL uh, senators that are pro-life. Uh, very few of them, but there are a number of them. And so that's one of the events that goes on down there. You see, it's just a, a nice, friendly place. Um, uh, people getting together. But again, I, I want to put the emphasis, put a emphasis here that this should be a day of mourning. Mourning for the 57 plus million lives that have been lost. That means jobs teaching jobs, uh, medical jobs, all kinds of jobs have been lost because these people aren't around, uh, and loss of relationships. It's, it's, uh, and, and that comes back to affect people later on. It just doesn't end uh, when a mother or grandparents think about the child, or father think about the child they do not have, you know, down the road or even a couple years later or even a couple days later. Okay, um, let's go and listen to um, what Leo Lalonde, he's the MCCL president, Minnesota Citizens Concerned for Life president, and he uh, opens up the ceremonies with uh, these statements. So let's hear what he has to say. Thank you. That was Darlene Havkus leading us in song this morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm MCCL's president, Leo Lalonde. I can't begin to tell you what a great pleasure it is for me to see such a huge crowd here today. Give yourselves a big round of applause. You know, your presence here today bears witness to both your commitment to protect human life and to your perseverance. You know, it was 42 years ago today that the United States Supreme Court stripped away all state laws protecting mothers and their unborn children, giving us abortion on demand in all 50 states. I can tell from your proofs that we all know that Roe v. Wade was wrongly decided. The court knows it too. Though several justices still cling to their anti-life views, the decision was ideologically driven. The court chose ideology, ideology over jurisprudence in their decision. In the Roe Wade uh, decision of 1973, this court said that they didn't know when life began. Therefore, unborn children could not be considered persons within the meaning of the law. Oh. 
modern science joins your opinion in confirming that they were dead wrong when they decided it. They were dead wrong around about biology and 57 million lives have been lost due to their error. I don't know about you, but I can, I can have a hard time getting my arms around 57 million. That's a huge number. But let's put that in perspective. That number approximates the number of public school children who are enrolled K through 12 in the United States in the year 2014. 57 million. In the years to come, history is going to remember Roe versus Wade alongside the Dred Scott decision of uh, 1857. In that case, the Supreme Court declared that African American, African slaves were not persons within the meaning of the law. It took a civil war and three constitutional amendments to reverse Dred Scott and to set Amer African Americans free at last. I hope and pray that the U.S. Supreme Court will correct its error and vacate Roe versus Wade. But you know what? We're not going to wait around until they do. During the Obama administration, we have passed more protective le legislation in the various states than ever before. While abortion activists offer women only one choice, states like ours are funding programs that meet the needs of pregnant women, enabling them to choose life for their children. This is happening because of people like you. People who actively support laws and lawmakers that uphold the right to life. Let's pray that this 42nd anniversary of Roe be the dawn of a new era, one that fosters respect for life rather than promoting its destruction. I want to thank you all so much for being here today. It's just amazing to see that crowd right there. I wish you could have my point of view. Well, uh, <laughs> fascinating statement, some interesting statistics there, but 57 million the number of students enrolled in public schools K through 12 in their in, in our nation that's how many children have been slaughtered at the hands of the abortionists and their mothers and those that have supported them in this uh, it, it's it's a tragedy beyond uh, it's just unmanageable and uh, when our conscience are seared when things like this don't bother us then our consciences are seared our country's in a bad bad spot and I hope your conscience is bothering you and bothering you enough to do something about it that will be constructive and promote life and later on the show I'll let you know how to do that um, you know, another comment I wanted to make at the legislators that were there supporting pro-life legislation, um, I wanted to note some that weren't. And, of course, my area, legislative area, um, is Representative Peter Fisher, Senator Chuck Wigger, and, of course, in that area is uh, Representative Leon Lilly. They're not there. They're four mothers being able to rip their babies apart limb by limb and uh, in my mind they those men and I use that term very loosely I don't call them men uh, have um, seared consciousness consciousness and another way that goes into effect is how Senator Wigger dealt with our public schools especially in Matamidae, being built next to a toxic waste dump, a piece of land that's listed as, uh, as a toxic, toxic waste dump. And so it's, it's really, really 
um, that's the effect of that. But of course, this is about the money. Of course, Planned Parenthood is about the money. It's about the state, the nation, and states like Minnesota that force people beyond their religious conscience, force these people to pay for abortions, which they abhorred. That's what Minnesota does. And that's what guys like Wigger, Lilly, and Fisher have no problem with. They sleep well at night knowing that they're taking your money to go and kill some other child. They don't have a problem with that. Oh, and there is a, um, uh, what, what's coming this Saturday? Um, town Hall for Wigger and Fisher, and it'd be good to bring that up to them. Uh, what are you going to do? And they're going to say, it's a woman's right to choose. Well, since when has anybody's right to choose been the highest value? It's certainly not the highest value for a man. This right to choose, the highest value of all things, yes, we want freedom, and we have some forms of freedom, but people don't have the right to choose whatever they want to do. Never had. That's why we have laws when somebody murders somebody. We restrain those people. That's why when we steal, when somebody steals, you know, they get arrested because you're taken away from somebody else's liberty. So you have to dehumanize the child in order to take away their liberty. And that's what happens. And that dehumanization, though, dehumanization goes beyond the womb for these people. It goes to your grade schools. So now, because of abortions, we have basically from the age 5 to 18, we've lost a whole generation of students over these 42 years. And that's a lot. That's a whole lot. Now, uh, the town hall is Saturday at 9 a.m. at Wildwood. Uh, and I thought that was at Matamidi uh, City Hall. I'm almost positive that is. Maybe that's at Wildwood is where that at. And then the um, Maplewood one is at uh, Maplewood City Hall with uh, Representative Lilly. Okay, and that's at 10.30. So 9, 9 a.m. Saturday at Matamidi City Hall, 10.30 at Maplewood City Hall. Um, okay, uh, let's um, go to the, the next clip. Then after uh, Leo Lalonde opened uh, with a statement, then we, we had prayer. And so let's hear, this is Pastor uh, Herman Kalan. As we pray to our Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, we thank you for your gift of life and for every other blessing that flows from you. I unite my praise and thanksgiving with the psalmist David when he wrote, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the, dirt, of the earth. For your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. After coming to you, Father God, with praise and thanksgiving for being the author of our life, we stand before you this 22nd day of January, commemorating the 42nd anniversary of Roe versus Wade decision and greeting the 57 million innocent lives which have been lost since the legalization of abortion. As Minnesota's pro-life citizens are gathered here today, we cannot help but to humble ourselves before you, the author of life, and repent. We ask that you would forgive us our debts, that you, as we also have forgiven our debtors, 
We ask that you would have mercy on us as a state and as a nation as your name is dishonored in this way. Please do not hold this to our account and forgive us all. And lastly, I come asking for your divine guidance and favor upon Minnesota citizens concerned for life and every other pro-life effort in this great state as we move forward another year. Help us stay focused on the three things that you have required us to do according to Micah 6.8. Help us to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. In the very precious name of Jesus, we ask these things. And God's people said, Amen. 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 All right, very, very good prayer. Of course, the Bible is very clear. We're, we're knit together, we're formed in the womb and intricately the detail that takes place of that knitting together and of course science just with what we know today and what we've observed and seen and how our bodies work uh, we're so so detailed and the design is so so specific it's just unbelievable and you know when I tell people about what it takes to produce a show in, in these studios and you have one button off and it just kind of makes it go whack, wacky, you know, and you can't figure out what button it is or what piece went wrong. Our bodies are billions of times more complex than the electronics in this studio. Billions of times. And so, so tiny, so little. And it, it's just, it's just amazing. And so it's just a powerful verse in Scripture about the baby, the child in the womb. But he brought up the issue of repentance, and repentance is a big issue in this because without repentance, acknowledging that we've done wrong, and then um, turning away, turning, making a decision to go a different route, Okay, you can't just, okay, I did wrong, but I can continue to do the same thing. That's not repentance. Repentance is going a different route. And without that, we really are under the wrath of God. And his prayer for uh, giving us mercy, God, oh, don't hold us to account for what we have done, is a legitimate prayer for everybody uh, to make. I used to do that in school, taking a test. God, don't give me what I deserve, you know, because <laughs> I didn't study, you know. <laughs> and uh, I went to Christian school. School, we prayed before our, our tests, and uh, I, when I got to pray out loud for our test, and that's what I would pray, give me better than I deserve, you know. And that's the state we are in Minnesota. God, we don't deserve what we need to have, which is your wrath. Give us something better and help us not to do what we shouldn't be doing and we shouldn't be killing babies' lives. So it's a very legitimate prayer to ask God not hold, to hold us to account for what we as a Minnesotan people group deserve as we mock God while we kill babies and take people's money forcibly to pay for these abortions. You know, in, in regards to a woman's choice, one thing that is said in this aspect of woman's choice, I know men and I know women who are at this time threatened to be taken from their property or have been taken from their property because they might be a harm to themselves or others. And for these women, where's their right to choose? because they're a harm to themselves or others. And abortion is the same way. Killing your baby, your offspring, is a harm to yourself, and it's a harm, definitely a harm to the baby. But see the disconnect that's going on here? You know, oh, we dehumanize that baby, well, pff, who cares? You know, except a baby that isn't aborted has full rights to inheritance if it's born after the father or mother dies. Yeah, and I said mother after the mother dies. 
babies are born after mothers die. They still have full rights of inheritance, although it's going to be fairly quick. You know, I mean, we, we have this inconsistency in our laws and in our nation, and it's not okay. It's not right. Okay, um, the next speaker is Scott Fishbach who is the executive director of Minnesota Citizens Concerns for Life, and he kind of lays out three bills that they're going to be pushing this year at the legislature. So let's have him speak about that, and then we'll go through those bills. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here today on this 42nd anniversary of the infamous Roe versus Wade decision. And also, a special welcome to our Spanish speakers today. Gracias por venir a la marcha por la vida. Estamos tan contentos. Digo esto, esto aquí. We welcome you. As we march in this cold, but actually kind of a nice Minnesota day, we want to thank you for coming out because we show that we are the kind, the caring, the compassionate movement that is the pro-life movement in Minnesota. You know, we have a lot of legislators with us here today. And so often they see lobbyists who want lots of things for themselves and for their own good. But this group comes every year. We ask nothing for ourselves, but only that the vulnerable, the weak, and the unborn can be protected. Since 1973, Planned Parenthood, Whole Women's Health, and other abortionists have killed 600,000 unborn Minnesotans, and there is no greater injustice in our land. Abortionists have robbed us all of so much love and so much life. Roe versus Wade has got to go. You know, the abortionists the abortionists may have won that coward case back in 1973, but they will never ever win the hearts and the minds of the people of Minnesota because we are pro-life. We know that every human life matters. Every human being counts. Every human ought to have a chance at life. We march today to demand equal rights for every human being. As Minnesotans, we respect each other. As Minnesotans, we care about each other and we love life. But last year, last year in our state, nearly 10,000 unborn babies were killed. Every day in our state, 27 unborn children are killed, and 27 will be killed today. Those babies' lives, those babies' lives were taken, and their mothers will suffer, and it's got to stop. And today, we have a three-pronged approach, legislatively, to stop abortion in Minnesota. More than a third of all of the abortions that are performed in Minnesota were paid for by you and I as taxpayers in this great state. And you know, the legislature didn't do it. It wasn't done by initiative. It wasn't done by referendum. It was done by the Minnesota Supreme Court. So today, we call on our faithful legislators to end taxpayer funding once and for all by passing the legislation to do it. Now last year, last year, our esteemed governor, Governor Dayton, signed a bill into law that required the licensing and the inspections of dog and cat breeding facilities in our state. That's fine, that's fine. But when we passed a law that said that you have to inspect and license abortion clinics, he vetoed the bill. Oh. 
This year we're going back at it again and we want to get that bill on his desk again because abortion centers in Minnesota should be licensed and they should be inspected. <laughs> Governor Dayton, why won't you let your own health department license and inspect abortion clinics? It's important to know that the third legislative agenda that we have is our additional funding for the safe place for newborn law. Infanticide should never happen in our state and we need to put funding behind the safe place for newborn law so that more individuals and more young people will know about that law. Yes. My friends, 42 years 42 years after Roe versus Wade. Awful. Just look around. We are stronger. We are stronger than ever before. We're growing, we're working, and we're saving lives. In the early 80s, the number of abortions were up over 20,000 a year. Last year, they were under 10,000. We're making progress. We will see a day, I promise you, we will see a day, and I pray that day is coming soon, when all human life is respected, all human life is protected. Together, let's today rededicate ourselves to fight harder for the unborn in our state. Are you willing to keep on fighting for unborn babies' lives? Will you support the ban on taxpayer-funded abortions? Yeah. Do you want abortion centers to finally be licensed and inspected? Yeah. Will you help spread the word about safe place for newborns? Yeah. All right, then together, let's go from here working together, all as pro-life Minnesotans, to make it happen. We can build a pro-life day. We can build a pro-life culture with your support and the support of these wonderful legislators that came out to stand in the cold today. We can do it. Thank you so much. Gracias. Mucho gracias for coming as well. Thank you. All right. Very uh, good statements there by Scott Fishbach. And, you know, 600,000 abortions uh, since... Uh, over the last 42 years in Minnesota alone. That's a significant percentage of Minnesotans considering, say, our population's uh, 5 million. Say it's 5, it's not that. And um, you're looking at over 10% of Minnesotans that have been killed. And then that's, of course, since it's 42 years, that's a whole group of people that never even were born because they never had children because they were aborted. Um, a court decision that took away or forced you to pay for an abortion is Doe versus Gomez. And it was just a hideous decision. Violates every aspect of a person's religious liberties. So when the one bill ending taxpayer funding of abortion and having that bill in there, you know, that's kind of a, how's that going to work? The Supreme Court already said it's okay. Well, what happens and the way the process works is you introduce the bill anyway. You put what law you want in there, okay, and then you put it back up and then it will go back before the Supreme Court. But in the meantime, you don't have to pay for that abortion and you're not being forced to pay for it. And then maybe with a different court, they'll rule a different way. It happens all the time. That's what goes on all the time. And so that's why it's important to get this legislation. Except for a miracle, um, and of course Seattle being in the Super Bowl now is a miracle after beating Green Bay, a resurrection from the dead in, in, a, in a sense, because they were goners. Um, but miracles happen is the point, okay? And ending taxpayer funding of abortions, God would have to break through Dayton's heart, his mind, and make him think differently than he does. And of course, also with the Senate we have uh, down there at the Minnesota legislature. But the House will pass a bill and the Senate will have to deal with it. I think an interesting statistic, he said 27 abortions a day in Minnesota. 
That's a classroom a day. That's just in Minnesota, a classroom a day. And then, another way to think of this, it's a sandy hook a day. You know the youth that went in and just shot and mowed down with uh, rifles and just phew, took out a number of kids, I don't know how many, but a significant number. It's a sandy hook a day and worse going on in Minnesota at Whole Woman's Clinic, which happened to be, oh, right there in the Star Tribune today. Initiatives targeting child abuse. Well, that's the headline there. But private decisions amid a public debate. They're not private when you're paying for it against your will. It's not a private decision. Now, of course, the number of abortions have gone way down from the, about the 15,000 plus mark to down under 10,000 this last time in 2013, which is a great deal. Now, people from my church go out to this whole woman's clinic, and they're out front asking to counsel people, hey, you know, we can get you help. We want to help. You have a baby. And every week, my understanding is that every week, one to two and sometimes four or five women change their mind because of the information they're giving, given. Because even though Planned Parenthood is supposed to give information that and you're supposed to have the ultrasound. As we heard on my show in the past, one of the abortionists said, yes, we do that, but we just say that's a blob of tissue. There's nothing to see. You got your ultrasound, here's a blob of tissue. They even have told people, as this abortionist in Texas had said, that we just scrape lining off the uterus, even though they're not pregnant, and say, see, here's the baby you aborted. Of course, if it's just tissue, what does the person know? But the reality, it isn't just tissue. Um, so, ending taxpayer abortion is a long shot in Minnesota. But, you know, God's beyond long shots. You can do whatever you want. Uh, this licensing of dogs and cats for breeding. Um, but a place like Whole Woman's Clinic, when you have the history of Gosnell, and you have a history of a number of abortionists, and even the Texas doctor saying, we wouldn't sterilize our equipment. That would cost money and take time away from getting another abortion in. And so that would slow us down. So we'd have fewer abortions during the day if we had to sterilize our equipment. And then you got guys like Gosnell, and there's a couple other one at least that made national news that were saying, you know, the abuse that they were doing on women was incredible. And the right to see a doctor and consult with a doctor, you know what happens when you go to an abortion clinic? You know the first time you see a doctor is when you're ready to have the abortion. That means you're on the table, you're prepped, that's when the doctor comes in. And guess what? It may not even be a doctor. Because that's what they've been caught doing over and over. In California, millions upon millions of dollars in Medicare fraud for abortions, double billing by Planned, double billing by planned Parenthood. Um, they've been caught. And so what do they do? They get more money from the state to pay their fines. That's how it works. Planned Parenthood needs to be defunded. We shouldn't be giving any taxpayers. Look at atheists. If you want to support abortion, pay for it. Out of the generosity of your heart, take your money and go pay for the abortion for somebody that wants to have it. There's nothing stopping you. You don't have to take money from somebody who objects to abortion in order to get that happen. Be compassionate in your mind to that, that individual 
and you pay for it. Now, I want to tell you this. From a Christian perspective, atheists' lives matter too. And most of these women going into and having abortions are atheists, don't have a religion, don't have a mindset here, know nothing about God. Of course, there are plenty of women going in there that do. Okay, But most of them don't. And so remember, these atheists, you're killing an atheist, a potential atheist there in supporting this. And so, I mean, in my opinion, atheist lives matter. You know, I don't have any... I, I just I don't want an atheist to be killed in the abortion mill at all either. Um, it shouldn't be happening. Okay, so why can't we have licensing? Why shouldn't we have licensing to make sure that these uh, areas are clean? The the number of mishaps that take place in abortion clinic are severe and they're strong. People die. And according to research, more people are dying now in abortion mills than when abortion was illegal. And so it's a bad place. The other law that was uh, happening is safe place for newborns. Um, so having a law that people can drop off their kids, that you have a newborn, um, if you're, you're stressed out, whatever reason, you can have a safe place to drop off your child and they'll be taken care of. Uh, it's an important. That's what a caring, compassionate society should do. So three, three key bills there. The licensing one, that should go. There, I mean, that anybody would object to a medical procedure that can cost somebody their lives to make sure that these doctors are licensed and the facilities are sanitary. I, I, how anybody objects to that, even if you're for abortion, is beyond me. That's a good one to ask Senator Weger and Representative Fisher uh, as to where they stand on that. And we're running out of time, so I'm not going to get into the federal bills and the, the drama that took place today, except that the House did pass a complete ban of taxpayer funding of abortion. That will go to the Senate. I'm sure it will pass there. And, of course, Barack Obama um, will uh, has said he would veto that bill. We'll see what kind of pressure because that's what happened. A couple of Republican lawmakers are going to have this vote to ban abortions after 20 weeks because after 20 weeks they know for sure that a baby feels pain. And then a couple of these Republicans, now that the Senate has control, these, Senate House, uh, these uh, House members, Republican House members, are backing down even though two years earlier, you know, they were all for this bill. And so that will still come up. It will still pass. But just a little brouhaha today. We're not going to get into that uh, because my challenge now, oh yeah, we've got to go quick here. My challenge is to pastors. Get your people out there. There's a lot of open space, a room for 100,000 people down there. You set a challenge. You set a vision. You get down there and challenge your people to get down there and we, we need 100,000 people down there. That's what needs to happen. And grow some guts, you pastors. Send a vision that that will help then change laws. It's going to be four years, if things are as they are, before abortion will be outlawed or changed in Minnesota. Four years. Because Dayton's governor, unless God changes his mind. And I, that would be a miracle. But, all right, we're going to close out here. And what I want us to watch here is this is taps at the end. And then God Bless America uh, is being sung. And I just want you to remember that this is a solemn thing because it's about repentance. It's about mourning the loss of these 57 million plus people, children and grandchildren. All right. Um, We'll see you next week. God bless.
everyone singing God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the ocean, white with moon. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, Takes the kite out.